catching up on my uh, second video so here we talk about unicode before we talk about unicode so let's talk a bit about ascii code and why it exists so there are two variants of ascii per se like one is 7 bit and one is uh, 8 bit so if you google it you will find uh, these two types of variations so there is a URL over here, full list, so you can see all the ASCII codes. So the 7-bit part, it covers the decimal equivalent from 0 to 127. But the 8-bit one, it covers from 0 to 255. So what it means, it means like all the characters in the keyboard, those are covered with the ASCII equivalents. But our computer, it talks in terms of bytes whenever anything is stored in the memory or in the registers or if any data transmission happens over the network it's all bytes so we stick to 7-bit ASCII there it's kind of a historical significance this uh, difference between 7-bit and 8-bit but uh, in today's world we stick to 8-bit only uh, I would give an exercise to the reader that uh, try to imagine a world where one byte is 7 bit. Try to think in those terms like how much the size of the RAM would be, the hard drive, how we would be transmitting data, stuff like that. So I, I would encourage you to do a research on that and uh, try to come up with uh, what you find. Next, let's talk about Unicode. Now, as we see that in ASCII, we have only 255 characters maximum. And if you take all the alphabets in all the languages, not just English, be it Japanese, Chinese, so many languages, so 255 characters are not sufficient. So, we go to the next level, we use what we call Unicode. Now, it's like no-brainer stuff. 8 bit you have now you have 16 bits that's all so you have two bytes and using two bytes you could represent like 65535 characters which is a lot of character which covers all the alphabets on all the languages that exist till today so that's the beauty about unicode yeah there is a drawback because it is twice the size of ascii so it will take twice the memory which is taken by ASCII, that's for sure. And one more thing is, like a lot of Unicode characters are still not being used anywhere. So we ran out of languages, right? So let's uh, jump into a quick demo. So you will find the source code over here. And I have already set up the project. By the way, when you go to this repository, you will see all the demo, like the previous ones and the forthcoming ones as well. So you will end up with something like this. In the solution folder, you will have a lot of projects. So if you want to compile a specific one, you just go over there and right click and set as start a project. So if you do that, it will be the coloring will be bold one, right? And then you press the debug and then you can run the program. So this demo is it shows basically the difference between ASCII code and the Unicode so it's a typical message box program which is based off of our previous video so here is message box A which means the ASCII and message box W which means the white character or two bytes like each character over here it consists of two bytes so window it works something like that be it ASCII or Unicode as we know the difference that ASCII is 1 byte or 8 bit and Unicode is 2 bytes or 16 bits so that's how the processing is happening so message box it accepts four parameters like the first one is null and then second is the content inside the message box the caption and then what kind of message box it should be so we have our strings over here which is normal C program and this is the thing which differentiates it from the ASCII, the L character which is preceding the strings. 
So that's where we specify the compiler that hey this is a two bytes character and you have to compile that in a specific way. Not only that, we also have a custom data type. So if you hover over it, so you will see that so like if I double click over there and go to declaration could not be located so let's try one more time So you know the best way is to just google it. So like I said it's a wcar underscore t is a compiler dependent not very portable stuff. This is the official one. size what I'm trying to do is to show the size actually as we know the the ASCII equivalent it's it's one byte Actually I know the data type so not this, not this. I guess this is the one. yeah yeah there it is so as you can see it's the bytes so this is the table that uh, you refer to while programming for windows like the integer type it takes four bytes unsigned int so even though this guy looks fancy over here like wcar underscore t but it's no magic it's just taking two bytes of space so it's start from 0 and 65,535 that's how Unicode suppose, uh, supports that much characters so I wanted to show you a little bit more like if I find unsigned short so that is also it starts from 0 and ends up at 65,535 and it also takes 2 bytes So I will probably leave this guys to you to figure it out. So basically there is a mapping, the compiler, actually this one it is eventually resolved into unsigned short and then everything is stored as hex. Everything is stored as bytes only. Uh, I'm not sure why this uh, Visual Studio it's not letting me do that but uh, you figure it out so you'll find that uh, this wcar is nothing but unsigned short only so uh, summarizing the video so before we move forward we would like to know uh, more about Unicode that's why this video is important to understand because uh, all the uh, stuff that is going to come up like all the API everything it would have the support for ASCII as well as Unicode so we c we could theory in theory we could write some Japanese character over here and we, we could see the output it's not just we can only output the English characters we could literally uh, output any character Chinese Japanese 
any any other stuff so that's the beauty about unicode and hope you uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, feel free to comment on this video so that i would like to receive the feedback if uh, this helps in day to day programming tasks especially um, when the issues come when programming with c++ so you have to deal with win32 api so uh, comment on these videos and if you would like to uh, like me to s cover any specific topic any uh, specific stuff so i would do that and subscribe so that uh, in the next video you would receive updates and uh, it motivates me if you subscribe so and i keep making the videos and i will cover a lot so we would dig like super deep into this stuff and uh, I hope you guys, uh, uh, I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.